Nick and Jolie got married three years ago, to be honest, if Jolie hadn't inherited her father's financial fortune after his untimely death, he never would have taken the risk. After her father, a once vigorous businessman, suffered a stroke, Jolie became his only heir. Nick was drawn to this turn of events since he was a lovable but sluggish person who was used to surviving off the kindness of women. Nick saw Jolie as a means to an end, a stopgap until a more profitable chance arose, but Jolie was seduced by his charming promises and fell into his clutches, but destiny had other ideas. In Nick's life, Jolie proved to be the ultimate prize. Now that she had access to her father's enormous wealth, Nick came up with a plan to take advantage of her feelings and manage her money. Taking advantage of the situation, he lavished Jolie with love and support during her mourning process. All the while knowing that her emotional susceptibility would allow him to control her feelings, Nick assumed the role of the faithful spouse, keeping his actual intentions a secret until after the burial while Jolie grieved the death of her father, then, slyly suggested they hold off until the period of grieving was ended, he made the marriage proposal, Nick could assume any persona to fit his needs, he was a master of deceit, manipulation, and illusion. Nick knew that the stakes were higher with Jolie than they were in his prior relationships with his rich women, where minimal effort was sufficient. Acknowledging that the benefits would greatly surpass the expenses, he was prepared to put in the work, but the first blow to his well-laid plans came as an unexpected surprise from an unexpected quarter. Nick had no idea that Mr. Chinland, Jolie's godfather and right-hand guy in the business, was also a close friend and valued confidant of Jolie's father, Mr. Chinlan saw Jolie's attraction right away and realized that she was adamant about getting married to Nick in spite of her doubts, Mr. Chinlan used his power to persuade Jolie to sign a prenuptial agreement after realizing how important it was to safeguard her interests. Nick was put in a difficult situation when he was shown the prenuptial agreement. Nick had no choice but to comply with Mr. Chinlan's insistence since Jolie, despite her grief, was not easily persuaded. Nick, however reluctant at first, reluctantly agreed to Mr. Chinlin's requirements, if not with outrage, Jolie wasn't a moron, even though she lacked financial experience, she made her decision with a resolute determination reminiscent of her father's financial skills, realizing how important it was to safeguard her wealth. Nick grudgingly accepted Mr. Chinlin's requirements after recognizing he was outmatched. Nick was essentially deprived of any claim to Jolie's inherited money by the meticulously drafted prenuptial agreement, which was created by an experienced attorney, though at first Nick thought the marriage would still be beneficial. He quickly became aware of his limitations, he was not allowed to access Jolie's finances or obtain joint ownership of any of her possessions under the terms of the arrangement. Mr. Chinland promptly put an end to Nick's plot to divert money from the shared budget and put it into his personal accounts. Nick had little money left over for his own spending because Mr. Chinland, a man of honesty and accountability, handled both Jolie's corporate and personal funds. Nick, though, held on to hope and excitedly anticipated what would happen. Jolie's intense desire to become a mother seemed to validate his patience, but all that ever came with each cycle was resentment and disappointment. Jolie ignored her body's warning signals and instead focused on running the company, initially attributing it to the stress of their busy lifestyle. When Jolie went to experts for assistance after almost a year of fruitless attempts, she was devastated to learn that she had cancer. She fought the condition for nearly two arduous years, experiencing numerous treatments that proved to be ineffective. Nick's involvement as a husband was minimal during this whole event. His stake was in Jolie's life evaporating into obscurity. Though they never discussed it publicly, Jolie was aware of his adultery even though he made an effort to hide his contempt for her, convinced of his cunning. Nick thought he could keep up the appearance of being a loving spouse to his dying wife without raising any red flags. To Mr. 
Chinlin's dismay, nurses and other hospital employees began to whisper about him as a result of his actions. Mr. Chinlin was furious and felt helpless, not understanding why Zhou Li persisted on keeping her marriage together while she was in danger of dying. In addition, he was worried about Zhou Li's absence of a will and how that would leave Nick as her only heir. Nick felt a sense of injustice and futility at the thought of inheriting everything, including the rewards of Zhou Li and her father's labors, his new friend Shirley, whose stunning beauty attracted attention as they entered the workplace, met him at the appointed meeting place, Nick saw Mr. Chinland and Jolie's friend Kurt right away, but what caught him off guard was Kurt's unexpected companion, a tiny boy tucked into a pram, Nick wasn't naive, even though he hadn't heard about Kurt's marriage or the birth of the child before. He quickly became aware that there was a covert purpose at work, which left him feeling both outwitted and insatiably curious about Jolie's plan, awkward stillness fell over the room for 15 minutes or so as each person took up a different corner, the notary appeared to purposefully extend the opening formalities, stressing the importance of the deceased's last will and testament, even though no one else showed up. However, Mr. Chinlin's sly smile suggested that Nick knew exactly what was written in the will. The shattering blow was delivered when the notary finally said, to my Lawful husband Nick, I deny the inheritance Nick felt embarrassed and acknowledged Shirley's attempt to walk away, her defiance evident, Nick, however, restrained her while averting her inquiring glance, even if he wanted to go away from the place where he had embarrassed himself in front of others, the performance needed to end, whether or not they had been invited, the notary then revealed another shocking revelation. Pausing briefly before continuing, saying, I bequeath all my personal property to my only son, Robert Turgis, until he reaches adulthood, I designate Mr. Chinland and his father, Kurt, as his executors and guardians, Nick's amazement at learning Kurt was his father was equal to a physical blow, Nick let out a surprised gasp as his composure broke, no one there seemed surprised by the news, not even Nick and Shirley is the boy Jolie's biological child, Nick let out a gasp, his voice strained and louder with incredulity, yes, Robert is Jolie and Kurt's biological son, Mr. Chinland explained, she hasn't been pregnant in the last two years, that's impossible, Nick was grasping at straws desperately, unable to process the realization, he was shocked by the revelation, even though he knew that pregnancy was no longer essential due to medical developments, Mr. Chinland's smug expression just made his dismay and astonishment worse, it's amazing how far medicine has come these days. The Godfather said, enjoying Nick's response, Kurt thought back to the time two years ago, when Jolie bravely revealed her illness and her wish to become a mother in spite of all the obstacles she told Kurt, I had my eggs preserved before starting treatment, I was told I probably wouldn't be able to raise my own child, but I insisted, Jolie brushed off Kurt's cautious question about whether Nick had consented to raise the child alone, no. I've already realized that my dear spouse is someone of questionable character. She replied, what about the infant? I wanted to talk to you about that. Jolie found it unusually difficult to bring up the topic tactfully. I want you to be my child's father, she cried, her voice shaking with need. Are you kidding? You have a husband, Nick said with astonishment. It was obvious Kurt was unprepared for this revelation. Indeed, I am married and I shall stay that way until the day I pass away, Kurt, I've already decided that, of course we're not going to share a bed, my condition makes it difficult, regretfully. I was unable to carry the child myself because I had my eggs frozen, we now require the prospective fathers. Biological material, I obviously need a woman to carry and give birth to him, but fortunately, these services are now offered, Kurt initially found it ridiculous, the incoherent babble of a helpless woman, to his astonishment, though, Jolie had a whole sensible strategy ready, she'd already done a ton of background work, looked into the legalities, made plans to use a reproductive clinic, and even located a surrogate mother for the unborn child, Kurt, I could use a donor to be the father of the child. I genuinely want to disappear into thin air, who will the infant be with, though, when you give it some thought, though I've been thinking a lot, 
I can only trust you, you have my confidence, having spent so much time getting to know you, I think you'll be an excellent father even as Kurt understood her logic, he couldn't help but feel confused, I recognize that your desire to start a family, get married, and bear children comes naturally to you, it makes sense, but please, give it some thought, right now, don't respond to me, in my opinion, following Nick's experience, it is imperative that the father of my child is not financially motivated and will not take advantage of my resources, I've matured since being married, I learned a lot from Nick, I've had a lot of life experience by now, as for me, you know I'm going to inherit, Kurt reminded her. You put in a lot of effort to maintain the family business's success, you've never needed anything, now, I can say with certainty. That a man who was raised in poverty will always worry about eating enough, and it will be a major issue if his decency is also lacking, I can attest to that myself, the woman said regretfully, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't understand, I had conceived about fatherhood quite differently, I must speak with my folks, recognize that I am not able to decide on this on my own, I'll need my close family member's assistance. Jolie had no problem with Kurt's decision to tell his parents and ask for their advice when he became a father, all she asked of Kurt was a pledge to keep the details confidential. The discussion with Kurt's parents was difficult, after listening to all the justifications and accepting everything without bias, his father gave his word that he would back his son's choice and do everything in his power to support his granddaughter, but his mother was not as accepting. She wished for him to marry a deserving woman and start a family, just like any mother does, having known Jo Lee when she was a young child, she had deep empathy for her, she found it difficult to grant the request, though, a mother found it difficult to accept that the mother of her possible grandchild was dying and that a different woman would bear the child, the idea of her grandchild catching the illness was something she detested, her fear subsided somewhat when Kurt told her that Jo Lee did not have a genetic type of the illness, she was not quite persuaded, but after giving it some thought, she said she supported her son's choice, Kurt was a victim of his own indecision, he hadn't expected Jolie to ask, but he thought it through and decided there wasn't a good reason to say no, Jolie was ecstatic to hear that he approved, and they started carrying out her idea little by little, Kurt, meantime, sat and thought about the story that had changed his life, Mr. Chinland reflected on his chat with Jolie from just over two months prior, she had come up to him, showing him her respect and hoped he wouldn't turn her down, she then blurted out that she wanted him to take on the role of protector for her son, Mr. Chinland initially believed his goddaughter to be delirious, the godfather was shocked when Jolie disclosed the whole story, Jolie and Kurt had not only taken such a risky step, but they had kept it a secret for a long time, Mr. Chinland, how old is the baby now? inquired Robert. Jolie grinned, he's eight months old, you two really are adept at surprising each. Other, Mr. Chinland said, still taking in the information, I want Nick to find out about the child before I die, actually, he won't know about it until my will is made public, it is now under draft and safely kept with the notary, but there's one thing that's still not certain, there will only be one parent for Robert, I've given a lot of my life a second look because I don't want to leave anything to chance. Robert will go to Kurt's parents if something were to happen to him, but just in case. I want you to have rights as well, Mr. Chinland was a shrewd man, and he saw that addressing Nick in this manner could be dangerous, even though Jolie's husband didn't seem to deserve it, Jolie. Are you sure this is the best course of action for your husband, he is an unpleasant man who uses dubious methods, he asked, why seek such vengeance from beyond the grave, before instantly apologizing for his direct remarks. I've thought about this for the past two years, you know, I observed Robert's birth and saw how much his parents loved him and how much Kurt loved him, I don't need anything more, I'm over the circumstance right now. People who talk to me about some sort of supernatural healing and recovery irritate me even more. Regarding Nick, although I had great affection and faith in him, he proved to be an extremely unappreciative creature. He acts as though my hospital stays are a burden. Are you aware that he came here with his girlfriends? The old guy gave a mute nod, his visage full. 
of hatred should I also put this away, not at all, above all, money is what he values most, that's how I'm going to discipline him, you see, it will come as a surprise to him, I didn't tell you everything, it was very challenging, I wanted to show you my son as soon as possible, however, I took great care to make sure that nobody unintentionally told Nick the truth, I might say goodbye to him now, Jolie said, I even wrote him a letter, which the notary will deliver, Mr. Chinlan tried to talk his goddaughter out of it because he thought it was a bad idea, but Jolie wouldn't listen to him, so he had to give in, it is, after all, her last will, it is deserving of respect, he considered everyone in the notary's office was deep in thought during the unexpected hush, naturally, it didn't take a fortune teller to surmise that Nick had cursed Jolie in every way conceivable. Individuals such as him frequently blamed others for their own shortcomings, failing to perceive their own, they found. Introspection too complicated, therefore they didn't see the need in looking within themselves for issues. Ironically, Shirley was the one to break the quiet, she tried to walk Nick out, but he hadn't yet finished talking, so he wasn't planning on leaving, are you certain that I have no rights whatsoever, a required portion, or whatever it's known as, after all, I'm the spouse, he cried, not to mention the other people there. Even Shirley cringed at his actions, the only one who wasn't astonished. Was the elderly notary, who wasn't surprised at all, you do not belong to the group of people who are required to receive a portion of the inheritance, as stated in the will, furthermore, the notary noted, I thoroughly examined your marriage contract, its text is attached here, he patted the bulky packet in front of him, and even if you file an appeal with the courts, you have no chance, naturally. You have the right to file an appeal, but I will contest that, as long as the identity of the illegitimate child remained a mystery, Nick would go on a rant and start saying things he didn't really understand. Kurt found it difficult to resist the temptation to punch the haughty man, and even the normally calm Mr. Chinland blushed with rage, the only person who didn't lose their cool was the notary, for whom this was just another ordinary workday, the child's birth certificate and medical records with comprehensive information regarding his birth are attached, the notary calmly said, in addition, per the decedent's request. There is a DNA test result verifying that your wife is Robert's biological. Mother, I should inform you that all documents have been gathered completely and thoroughly. Can I see? Nick insisted, eager to examine the proof. No, you are limited to reviewing the section that concerns you. Only with the parent's permission may any other documents be shared, particularly those pertaining to the kid. Naturally, I won't let it. Kurt forcefully intervened, so it's only possible in a court proceeding if the court deems it necessary to demand these documents, Kurt continued, clearly. Frustrated, Nick vowed not to let the matter rest and walked out of the office, slamming the door behind him, on the other hand, his mistress discreetly said farewell and closed the door behind her, is it significant that he failed to sign, it was read to him, the will, Mr. Chinland asked the notary, looking for confirmation, the notary reassured him, there are many like him, it's nothing more than a formality, if it weren't so depressing, it would be humorous, Mr. Chinland wondered out loud, I still don't understand how Jolie got involved with him, though his inquiry remained rhetorical, the men shook hands and quickly signed the required paperwork, then Mr. Chinland helped Kurt load young Robert into the pram, are you going to come along? He said, I want to go for a walk and breathe some fresh air, it's good for the baby. Kurt asked, sure, I'll come along for a bit, Mr. Chinland answered, when they strolled silently. They heard the stroller wheels rustling, do you think Jolie would be satisfied with how I'm coping? Kurt asked at last, expressing his worry that had been bothering him, I have no doubt about it, his godfather calmed him, saying, you're a fantastic father, and it's plain to see how much you both mean to each other, I have to admit that there is one thought that keeps coming to mind, you know, I believe Jolie informed you that I cautioned her about the events that transpired at the notary public, are you talking about this circus with the will and how Nick found? Out about Robert, Mr. 
Chin Land gave a nod of agreement. Kurt answered, of course, I was the one who brought up the topic of that conversation on a regular basis. This concept didn't appeal to me at all from the start. He is a mercenary, spiteful, irrational, and furious person. Why arouse him, to be honest? I even considered informing him that Jolie was hiding it when the baby was already delivered. I felt I had no right to, so much, I came to the conclusion that she simply didn't want to handle him directly and left these arguments to us, I saw him with that woman today, not even flinching, I now wonder if it was the appropriate decision for me to back off from my position, his response and the look on his face were terrifying, it was wiser to have parted ways with him sooner, Jolie, in my opinion, didn't want to either, that also had an impact, and retaliation, regardless of what she later maintained. She desired retribution because she was in love, there was no way out of the intensity of her corrupted love, the old guy comforted her, tears streaming down his cheek, saying, don't be sad for her, she prayed Robbie would feel our affection, when Kurt consoled Jolie's godfather and others reflected, he saw Nick and Shirley in the car having a similar chat, are you serious, all we have left is nothing, with her eyes blinking quickly, the girl let forth an unbelieving cry, you need experience. With this foundling, there's no chance now, she said, her voice tinged with anxiety. All right, let's move. We have to move something important to my flat and rescue it. Kurt took three days to get the confidence to go to Jolie's abandoned house, only to discover it was empty. He even hired security guards as a precaution against confrontation, but Nick foresaw the situation accurately and withdrew to his own residence, making sure to take plenty of valuables with him. Nick was sitting by himself in his small kitchen, sipping on a glass of whiskey that Shirley had predictably, left behind, his thoughts turned to his situation at the moment, he used to get paid well by women for his company, but these days he was charging young, attractive girls for his time, ironically, Nick, who was previously a successful gigolo, blamed his estranged wife, the alleged villain who sacked his energy and crushed his dreams of inheriting, for his downfall rather than his vices, he was the picture of youth, charm, prosperity, and success in his dreams, However, Shirley's final remarks were a harsh reality check. She had said, you are not needed by anyone. Nick, who was now a dejected alcoholic clinging to conceited delusions, would not take responsibility for his situation. Acceptance of this terrible reality proved to be quite challenging. Nick's aspirations of fame and fortune, which were closely linked to his ex-wife, fell apart like a shaky house of cards. His dreams of being a successful businessman were dashed, and his inflated ego kept him from realizing how much of a part he played in his own demise. Rather, he placed the blame elsewhere, holding his late wife responsible for all of his problems. Nick descended into an almost two-week-long drunken stupor, turning to reality for comfort as his animosity grew more by the day. He was having a terrible, hangover-filled morning when he snapped. He understood that burying his grievances would not bring him prosperity or allow him to exact revenge on Zhou Li. When men from Mr. Chinland showed up, he was even more humiliated when they forced him to give up his car keys and destroy the power of attorney Jolie had given him, Nick presented himself as a saint in his self-righteous illusion, easily ignoring his own vices, such as alcohol consumption, gambling, and dismissive behavior toward his wife, it's unfortunate that she's deceased and I can't strike her, he thought to himself, regretting his self-control and misplaced endurance. His thoughts turned to vengeance as he considered his next move, Nick was first tempted to desecrate her grave, but he changed his mind after considering what would cause Jolie the greatest suffering, that's when it hit him like a bolt of lightning, Robert, the thought of bringing harm to Jolie's beloved son thrilled him and offered him a fresh way to get revenge, when he eventually came up with his plan of retaliation, his laughter was laced with venom, he had decided on one important factor, albeit there were still logistical challenges to be addressed, Robert would not be hurt, nothing could break a mother's heart more than not being able to help her child in danger, that was exactly what Nick wanted, driven by a frenzied imagination, the outline of his scheme was simple, 
kidnap the child, take him off to somewhere, and leave him at an orphanage, Nick's soul, if he had one, flushed with joy as thoughts of retaliation danced through his head, even though it seemed menacing. His grimace revealed his inner joy, appearances meant little to him, his enjoyment was deep inside, after the establishment of the theoretical framework, pragmatic considerations surfaced, to plan the ideal crime, Nick required in-depth knowledge of Robert's habits and associates, Nick knew Kurt and his family from when they'd lived in their suburban stronghold and had taken extra precautions, he pondered the difficulties that were ahead and the time and effort that would be needed for surveillance. But even with his brain already shattered by the upheaval of the wills, Announcement, Nick reasoned that the game was worth the candle. He mumbled, enjoying the thought of a poor heir and a guilty mother, she ruined my life, and I will ruin her child's, his sarcastic laughter reverberated through the empty room, had someone looked closely at him, they could have seen the sharp decline in his sanity, however, history did not consider such theories, Nick was unstoppable in his quest for vengeance, regardless of the consequences, because of his unmatched tenacity, he dedicated himself to the work, spending two full days in careful planning rather than just watching nick searched the whole area carefully in order to find the best spot to hide from view it had to provide a view of the entire hamlet including the turgis house nick got up early for more than a week rushing to the settlement and staying until nightfall keeping a constant watch via binoculars and recording everything that happened inside the house he was so watchful that he took careful notes making sure he didn't miss anything after learning that kurt's mother and grandmother were the child's major caretakers nick realized that kurt and his mother weren't the right fit for his ideas because of the possibility of identification he expected questions from the authorities but he did not intend to suffer the consequences of his conduct he therefore designated the nanny as the object of his plot he watched her on wednesday walks during the day getting to know her habits and how she moved, and he carefully scheduled his activities to align with her excursions. On a Wednesday, Nick's patience paid off when the nanny left with the sleeping infant, going outside the settlement to meet another nanny in a nearby clearing. Nick heard them laughing, and that strengthened his determination. In order to avoid being discovered, he avoided being watched every day and only went on Wednesdays, when the nanny was there. Every Wednesday happened precisely as the nanny set out along her forest trail, unaware of the peril that awaited her. When Wednesday the 4th drew near, Nick got ready to carry out his plan, sure that it would be perfectly orchestrated, he carefully planned every move, making sure that it was all done in secrecy and deception, Nick bought a powerful stun gun from a neighborhood market, choosing to pay with cash to avoid any potential for tracking, just as precisely, he arranged to buy an old car and, in order to elude suspicion, changed the license plate. He parked carefully, striking a balance between being close enough to make a quick getaway and still being unnoticeable, sensing that he would need to conceal himself, he changed his appearance, covering his face and body to prevent identification, his obsession with the upcoming deeds seeped into his subconscious, controlling his nightmares and taking up all of his waking moments, the closer the appointed day drew he felt the weight of expectation pressing down on him, physically and emotionally changing him, tension lines on his face revealed the inner anguish caused by obsession and worry he was waiting tense in his anxiety on that fateful wednesday when the nanny arrived pushing the stroller his distant plotting gave way to the reality of what was about to happen causing tremors to run through his body the imagined scene which had seemed far away suddenly seemed very real a fight a stun gun and a running person carrying a child nick was naturally peaceful but his deep-seated animosity toward Joe Lee strengthened his determination. He took advantage of the situation with a burst of adrenaline, attacking the nanny, stubbing her unconscious, and making his way to get the kid back. But when he bent down to take the youngster out of the stroller, his carefully thought-out preparations came apart. He reeled from a sharp hit, losing consciousness. The next time he woke up, he saw an old guy, Mr. Mayo, standing over him with a severe expression. An eminent member of the local affluent communities, the gamekeeper had 
happened upon the situation and intervened decisively, Nick's desperate attempt had failed, his captors sharp by cutting through his well-laid facade, the odd figure, dressed in black even in the early morning heat, had not slipped Mr. Mayo's eye. As he later told the investigators, with years of experience as a gamekeeper, Mr. Mayo's instincts were sharpened, and he moved silently through the woodland. Always careful not to disturb the creatures, he took up position behind a tree and watched. Warily, his sharp eyes spotted a man abusing a woman, and at first he thought the worst, but as things went on, it became evident that the child she was watching over was the man's intended victim. Mr. Mayo reacted quickly and stopped the assailant's advance with a stick. His quick thinking turned everything around. After being recognized as a hero in the community, Mr. Mayo was thrown into the limelight and demanded interviews from the media. However, he rejected the attention, retiring to his home in silence and shunning his newfound notoriety. He saw his acts as nothing more than the instinctive reaction to a circumstance in which the weak were endangered. Kurt, the father of the kid who was saved, showed up at Mr. Mayo's house a few hours later, his gratitude brimming. Mr. Mayo, moved by Kurt's sincere gratitude, played down his contribution, viewing it more as a duty than a brave act. Kurt insisted on paying him back, but Mr. Mayo dismissed the idea, saying that rescuing a child was more important than money, Kurt explained throughout their talk the complex chain of events that culminated in the drama of the day, including his wife Jolie's illness, their unconventional parenting style, her untimely death, and the ensuing resentment toward her husband. Mr. Mayo listened carefully, lending Kurt's story of suffering and loss a sympathetic ear of Mr. Mayo was intrigued by Kurt's account and keen to learn more about the reasons for the developing narrative he gently pressed for. Further details, Kurt recounted the complicated details of his life with Mr. Mayo, feeling touched by his genuine interest and thankful for the opportunity to confide in a sympathetic listener, Kurt had been itching to let go and look for an unbiased opinion from someone who wasn't related to him, he felt the burden of accountability, wondering if their acts had driven Nick into a revenge and insanity spiral. He turned to Mr. Mayo and asked if they were responsible for Nick's spiral into retaliation. Mr. Mayo gave a direct, no-nonsense statement that left no room for misunderstanding. Kurt's self-doubt was ignored by him when he blamed Nick's behavior on personal shortcomings rather than outside factors. Mr. Mayo addressed Nick's past of avarice, deceit, and heartless abuse of his spouse in an open and honest manner. He refuted Kurt's idea of collective guilt by emphasizing Nick's innate propensity for brutality and selfishness. Kurt took comfort in the clarity Mr. Mayo's words. Provided, even in spite of their brutal reality, he gave the gamekeeper's observations careful thought and saw that it would be incorrect to place too much blame on Nick's decisions. Kurt accepted his obligation of thanks to Mr. Mayo and expressed his gratitude for his advice as they said their goodbyes. They were filled with a renewed sense of friendship and Mr. Mayo promised to be Robert's guardian angel, as promised. He established himself as a constant in their life, providing Kurt and his kid with companionship and support, with time passed, the family managed to find some measure of harmony, closure arrived with Nick's imprisonment, allowing them to resume their tranquil lives, under Mr. Mayo's loving care and with Kurt's newfound love, Robert grew up in a loving home, still, in all the peace, Kurt refused to waver in paying tribute to Jolie, with treasured memories and meaningful talks, he made sure Robert would always remember his mother's love, Kurt taught Robert, with unshakable commitment, that Jolie's soul persisted and continued to be a guiding force in his life. Kurt's unflinching love served as the lighthouse that guided them forward in the story of redemption and resiliency, making sure that Jolie's legacy lived on in the hearts of those she left behind. Above is today's story, if you like it. Please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.